Welcome, Grace. Take it away. Thank you. Healthcare, when you think about it, is really about connectivity. We have the basic human connectivity that exists between the patient and the caregiver, the healer and the healed. That's as old as recorded human history, and probably much older than that. But there's another form of connectivity that's woven into the fabric of modern healthcare. That's the connection between a caregiver and the body of information needed to provide excellent and personalized care. That trove of healthcare data is unimaginably vast, constantly changing, yet absolutely vital to the delivery of effective care. For much of human history, this knowledge was passed down by oral tradition. Eventually, it was recorded on scrolls and in books and in medical journals. In recent decades, of course, we've been storing this information digitally. Adapting our technologies to radically improve our access to health information. So when you get down to it, the practice of medicine depends on how we handle these two forms of connectivity: our human connection with the patient and our cognitive connection to the data we need to do our absolute best for everyone we care for. I am here to talk with you about a truly novel way in which 5G and augmented reality are poised to make a valuable contribution on both these levels of healthcare connectivity. My name is Christopher Morley. I'm a physician, specifically a radiologist. My clinical responsibilities cover the full stack of medical imaging, MRI physics to diagnostic interpretations to image-guided procedures. I chose radiology because of its pervasive influence on patient care across every other subspecialty in medicine. I love the beauty of the data. I have great respect for the subtleties that exist, and that, when appreciated with an exceptionally skilled eye, can genuinely save your life. It happens every single day. Those are the stories we like to tell. But of course, medicine and surgery remain the youngest sciences. They consistently humble even the most competent practitioners. Over the years, I've witnessed innumerable failures and misfires. Some of these were due to human error, my own included. Others were the results of systemic shortcomings. Some of which were ultimately devastating. Most of these were absolutely preventable. These are the stories that should be told. 5G is an open invitation, not simply change how we do certain things, but to fundamentally rethink how to do all of it. This includes the connection between patient and caregiver. While some new technologies are pushing patients and pro providers further apart, 5G represents an enormous coming together. And in healthcare, bringing pieces together, making things simpler, is one and the same with making them safer. The truth is that many routine procedures done at the bedside and in the operating room are performed the same way they were three decades ago, blindly. Take this case as an example. Among the most commonly performed neurosurgical procedures is the freehand ventriculostomy to decrease intracranial pressure. This procedure involves placing the catheter through the skin and skull and into the cerebral ventricles at the center of the brain. The standard approach for determining the placement and trajectory of this catheter. Is by eyeballing a few facial, facial landmarks and going for it. There's no consideration for the immense variation among individual patients as to the precise location of certain vessels and structures beneath the brain or inside the brain itself. Unsurprisingly, this results in a 40% catheter misplacement rate and a 20% major complication rate. Here, you can see an example of what happens when we don't get things exactly right. This hyperdense material represents excess bleeding immediately following the catheter placement. This kind of error rate is completely unacceptable, and it's just a microcosm of how inexact this entire science still is. The way we perform many of these invasive procedures and the burden of illness associated with doing them has remained unchanged for decades. With seemingly insoluble problems like this, we should always take a step back and start asking different questions. In this case, we can ask, why are so many procedures still performed so blindly, especially when nearly all patients undergoing invasive procedures have a detailed map of their personal anatomy just sitting latently in the computer in the form of CT or MRI scan? Unfortunately, as it turns out, given the size and setup required to use traditional surgical navigation systems, this preoperative imaging is rarely utilized to its full potential. And until recently, these data sets have been trapped within flat 2D monitors, static 3D printed molds, or restrictive virtual reality headsets. As a result, the entire profession has been falling short on both these levels of healthcare connectivity. In many cases, 
the practitioner must actually face away from his or her patient towards a screen rather than towards the human being that professional is taking care for. This is a fundamental and very common impairment of the ancient bond between patient and healer. It's also hindering our cognitive connectivity when we're unable to turn patient data into actionable insights at the point of care when it's needed most. About two years ago, I co-founded a medical technology company named Medivis, along with one of my neurosurgical colleagues, Osama Chowdhury, who I met while finishing residency in New York City. The mission of our company is to leverage emerging technologies, principally augmented reality, computer vision, and machine learning, to bring fuller connectivity to the practice of medicine by advancing this idea of portable, easy-to-use surgical navigation. The goal is to bring these technologies together, to unfold complexity and reduce uncertainty in surgery. We do this by rethinking how medical imaging can be best utilized throughout all action stages of the surgical decision-making process. Let me show you what I mean. These videos are real, recorded directly through the HoloLens display in real time. This clip shows three consecutive brain tumor removal, removal cases. This enhancing lesion is a recurrent glioma, a kind of tumor that occurs in the brain and spinal cord. Tools like this allow surgeons to precisely plan where to make an incision and determine how big the craniotomy or hole in the skull needs to be. This way, we can see all the vessels and landmarks we need to be mindful of. Tools like this close the literal and figurative gaps that have always persisted in our efforts to maximize the full potential of medical imaging data in surgical settings. They remove assumptions and allow us to be far more deliberate and confident in every decision we make. Now we can go even further by layering on machine learning and directly interfacing with medical devices. The exciting part about all of this is that it's just beginning. The potential of 5G connectivity and augmented reality throughout healthcare is truly limitless. It will enable immersive collaboration between doctors and patients, both face-to-face -face and in remote locations. It will fundamentally transform how we train our students, the future caregivers. It will raise the bar of the entire profession, making it far more integrated and personalized. Innovations like this have been a long time coming. This idea of harnessing mixed reality to transform surgical visualization is not new. Its origins go back to medical journals in the early 1960s, when researchers first started predicting that someday it would be possible to holographically overlay medical imaging data directly onto patients to essentially render them see-through during a procedure. Well, it's taken about 60 years for the technology to catch up to that vision, but we're finally standing at the edge. And this is just an inspiring glimpse at what's possible in a 5G-connected healthcare. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. That touches everyone.